Hey guys, I'm Joel. In this video, I'm gonna be working on the E46 budget wagon. Finally, this thing right here, yo. I just gotta say, you guys were 100% right. In the last video, you guys were telling me just change the O2 sensors, get them replaced, because that is the fix for what I'm trying to do. And I got so tunnel vision because I just hear people say tune the ECU and then it deletes the rear O2s. And that's what I thought it did, but it wasn't as easy as just doing that for trying to pass emissions. They do that just so that the light goes away, but you can't actually pass emissions just like that. So I got super tunnel vision and I just got distracted. And sometimes you just need to take a step back. I got some perspectives, you guys, and you guys were just telling me, get it done replace the actual sensors which that is the right move i should have done that from the beginning but i thought it'd be way easier programming it out it was not <laughs> it was not way easier but at least i know so much more about emissions now i don't think it's that big of a deal i just wasted a little bit of time but we'll move on whatever and the reason why i got one of the o2 sensors out and look at how disgusting this looks it's just these o2 sensors were shot i just decided i'm gonna go cut the wire and start destroying these sensors because there's no other way that these things are gonna come out this was the easy one to take out so what ended up getting it out was this wrench 22 mil i used the box in right here and this one was easy because i could just get it on right there and hammer it out from right here so since these two were stripped this little o2 socket doesn't really work and doesn't do anything it just slips and that's what made it get to this point it's just not good. Shut up. Yo, you guys are about to see a pussy work in a car right now. Unsub. Dislike. <laughs> I've been sawing at the O2 sensor for a pretty good amount of time with this hand sawzall right here. Because I don't have a sawzall. But it seemed like it went around. I just went on this side, that side, and the bottom. And I just hammered at it with the wrench right here. And it peeled it back a little bit right there. So I'm going to try and fully get that off. Oh my god, this thing is destroyed. So now I can fit the wrench on in here. It's stripped, but I don't know. It, it's better than where I was before. I wish it wasn't stripped, but that's what it is. I can now get the wrench on under and get into it from right here. So I can heat the actual bung up crazy right here. And I have way more room to hammer it from this angle. I don't know if that's actually doing anything. It's so loud. Did it just strip or is it actually coming out? I just finished door dashing in the E30 part five. I'm exhausted. I'm so tired, but I got these twist sockets in the mail today. It has a 22 mil, that's what I need. And I got the 202 sensors, I ordered them again. Damn it, y'all, I should have just never returned them. But these things should chew into the head of the whatever and hopefully get it out i don't know if it's gonna fit if it's gonna even be able to fit with a half inch we'll see before i tap it on i'm making sure that this half inch breaker bar actually fits in a position that i can get it out on so i'm just testing it making sure it slides on see like right here i have plenty of space to actually pull down on it i'm actually just lo trying to loosen it right now and it's like digging into it which is Oh, it's pretty tight on there right now. I don't even have to tap it on. Ah! Oof. Ah. Holy shit, that is so tight. Yes! Yes! Oh, yes. That's exactly what I wanted to see. <sighs> fuck. This right here is why I didn't want to fuck with this. I don't know if that's an exhaust leak or not. It looks like one. It's literally going to just have to wait for this transmission to get out because there's no room. I just came out here and speed ran me fucking up my car, yo. That is a damn shame. 
So because of this beautiful little thing, I'm just gonna install the one that I got out and then put it back together. So I can put the E30 in here because there's a hurricane coming tomorrow. This car is not getting garage when there's a hurricane coming. Since I'm not gonna be putting the bank two sensor back in, I'm gonna be putting this one to bank one up here. That should be good there. So like I said again, I just wanna say, I got very tunnel vision. I thought it's stripped and the first one came off with not that much trouble once I actually could get a good grip on the actual O2 sensor. So I thought I could heat it up a little bit and then I could just, once it has a good grip on it, it'll come off. I completely forgot about the fact that it could be seized and it's gonna destroy. <laughs> so with that, I sh maybe should have just put the torch onto the actual O2 sensor until it was red hot, sprayed water on it a few times just to break the rust loose. That would have been the smart move but I didn't know, I didn't know it was seized. So whatever, this is exactly why I tried tuning it out first because if I would have done this from the beginning, I would have been pretty hurt. <laughs> now I got the car ready to start. Let's see how bad this sounds. I mean, I can't hear any extra exhaust leak. It could just be still sealed. Yeah, I was expecting a very loud, noticeable leak coming from the car, but... It might be leaking, but it doesn't sound bad and obnoxious, so... <laughs> I guess that's better than I thought. I thought it was gonna be like so unbearably, annoyingly loud, but it's not that bad. I got this handbrake extension off of Drift HQ. It was $50, and I got it because it's powder-coated and it has the grip already on it, and it's super easy with two set screws already in it to hold it into place. I could make this by myself and do that, but I think it just looks so good and clean. And I think this is one of those things where if I messed up making it, I would hate it, but I would never replace it <laughs> until I got a hydro, cause I would just be like, whatever. So this little knob right here has to come off and you start just by pulling the boot off. And with the shift boot and all, it just slips off which is cool. <laughs> now you wanna, since it has this little button with the spring in it, you wanna take the button out to take the spring out and then just slide that over right here and that's good. I've been screwing this button for so long so I'm about to just. Pull the whole rod out. <laughs> I guess this is <laughs> it's not exactly what I wanted, but it's better because now it's never gonna it's never gonna activate on its own. <laughs> and with this put the armrest down and this there. Obviously I have to bolt it in, but you could decide once there's a shifter here, probably want it more to the left. When I'm pulling it from right here, it's super hard because there's a lot of tension on the cables, but from up here, you have way more leverage. So that just pops off right there. There it is. <laughs> I know that this is very low on the priority list, but <laughs> it's something I wanna just get out of the way and just get it so I don't have to worry about it, which is, <laughs> I don't know, that's just what I wanted to do. Look at here. Ooh, you know what that is. I'm recording a DoorDash video right now and I had to stop on my lunch break to open this. Finally, the seat for the E46 is here. And I cannot wait to open this. Oh, look at it. Dude, there's like no extra packaging. What the hell? It's literally just in here. <laughs> oh, baby. It's so light. Oh, yeah. Let me take this bubble wrap off. Damn. Let's go! I'm so hyped on this. <laughs> Damn! I love how that looks. I didn't think anything from NRG was all that. I thought it was kind of, you know, whatever. But for the E46, I think this is perfect. Let me see. I'm up. Oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. This is what I need in the E30 or a seat this size. I cannot sit this upright though. I need to be. Yeah, like that. Oh, this is so comfortable. <laughs> I look like a little ass kid doing this. 
and the back is all sparkly too which is cool i cannot wait i have to go with doordash now but i wish i could try and start installing this but i gotta wait till tomorrow to start installing it damn it i want to try and weld that energy seat to the stock frame rail just because i want to try and do it as cheap as possible and i don't want to buy another seat rail so the only concern with that is i don't know how low it's going to be sitting so right now i'm just going to take the seat out with the four bolts right there and place the energy one in here and then i'll get to see how low it sits just with no rail or anything i also can't forget the seat belt either Keeping the stock location for the seat belt also would be pretty nice with this seat. I just want to disconnect the seat. Turn that bracket off right there. I'll definitely vacuum all this stuff out before properly installing everything. So it doesn't just bolt right up because the studs on in the chassis are too wide on both sides so and it's a little short so it definitely needs another rail to adapt it onto there before i keep going i'm just gonna take the time to clean all this up this is so ridiculous you can tell which stuff is mine it's everywhere and it's a mess this table oh my god i just need to take an hour and do it so i'm gonna clean this before even continuing I need to make sure that this garage is clean because now that I have the transmission, I can pull the transmission out any day now. It's like two hours later, I don't know, probably more. And I finally got it all cleaned up. I got the transmission out of the car. Quick little sneak peek. I'll go more in detail about everything here on the next video that's on the E46. But that's everything to do the five speed swap. And we're all organized on the floor. Everything up here is still a nightmare, but I just don't have any room for anything. That's clean. So, <laughs> finally, I can start working on this and start trying to take this seat off of the rails. I saw Jimmy Oaks do this two years ago with Brian's E46 and it gave me inspiration to trying to do it. This is how I mounted it on the E30. I took the stock seat, ripped the stock seat off, and then welded the other seat onto the stock rails, but I lost that footage. So, I can't upload me doing it to the E30 because it's gone. It went really smoothly for them, so I'm hoping it's gonna go as smooth for me. I'm just gonna start by taking everything off. No turning back now. I was struggling like crazy to get this outer plastic out, and you have to pop this pin out this out right here and on the inside right here so you have to pry this back to get access and there we go now it actually is gonna be able to come out wow that just broke oh yeah <laughs> I just cut this wire. This is for the heater. This goes to the back seat right here. And then this is just right there. So I'm gonna cut that. There we go. I'm gonna just grind this pin off right here. There we go. So that side's loose. I unbolted this piece right here. Junk now. And now it's gonna come out. Right there on the left. Now the other side is fucking caught. <laughs> yep, there it is. I finally just took this second. My guy Omar pulled this off. So this was held in by these two clips. It pulls this whole control unit off of the trim. And then that lets you pull the whole clip off. I'm gonna have to cut this right here, cut that whole lump off so that the seat could sit relatively flat. I'm trying to get this rod out with this whole motor assembly, but this isn't wanting to fit through there. So I'm gonna just cut it off.
That was actually ridiculous. Yo, this dude Omar just picked that motor up and this whole thing just slid out. <laughs> if I would have just pulled it this way, it would have came off and I didn't have to cut that. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid, yo, that was OD, whatever. That's hilarious. <laughs> I got the piece cut off and now it's just really rough. I just wanna place the seat on, see how it fits. And so here's how it fits. The rail is just sitting perfectly on the bracket that already comes on the seat on both sides. So it's literally <laughs> like meant for this. So if I just grind it off and weld that straight to it, oh. I think I'll be good. So the rail is just sitting right there in its place and the seat is just gonna sit right on top of it. There's no way that this is, <laughs> What the fuck? Why am I so high up? There's no way that this is the lowest it'll go. It might just be that these are one too high. So, lowered it down one. Oh yeah, it looks way better. So now getting in, I see why you need a quick release because this shit is so in the way. The height feels, I wish I was a little bit lower. The only thing. I might just be trying to be too picky because it doesn't even sit that bad once the door is in and the door panel is actually up next to me. And I'm thinking if I have a quick release, it'll pull it towards me a little bit. So it won't be like it's hard as hell to get in and out of this. Since I'm here, I'm just going to try and move this bolt down to the bottom because with this at that angle, it's kind of I can't get my heel onto the accelerator. So I'm going to try and lower it down one. So there it's in just at the lowest setting and there's a lot more room between the steering wheel so that's a good sign. Yeah, I'm thinking this is how it's gonna have to be on the lowest setting on both of them. Cause now I can actually fit my heel into the little pocket. Cause before I was like this. So this is definitely how it's gonna go. I got this welder now from my dad's shop. It's a flux core, so I'm not too good at welding with flux core, but I'm gonna give it a tack right back over here and a crack in the front right there. Got my coat covering it. Hopefully this doesn't go badly because flux shoots a lot of sparks everywhere. boogers all on there it's all tacked up i can move it and shake it and it feels pretty good so i can go put this back in the car i put the seat controls in and i put it all the way back and it's so far away from the pedals which that's a good i guess but once i start going kind of forward it starts to hit right here on the center console but this is where my seat is comfortable so it's touching a little bit but it's not bad so i'm gonna definitely just put some welded in right now because where it's at feels super comfortable it's straight it's not crooked in one direction and it feels like i'm gonna be able to have like a really good time in this car <laughs> Don't be an idiot asshole. Wear long sleeve shirt and pants for this because this shit burns. I want to make sure nothing's catching on fire on me. Came in with a wet rag, wiped it down. It's looking a lot better. I'm trying to cool it off a little bit so it doesn't affect the fiberglass. I think this is good, honestly. I can call it quits here and it should be good. Three welds. I feel very Our good about shot. this. Here's a look at all the ugly little welds with the flux core. I'm going to come back in tomorrow and paint it all. And here's this side too. 
So once that's all painted up, I could put the plastic covers back on and the seat's gonna be ready to go back in. I'm actually just gonna paint it right now because I want it to be dry tomorrow. Here goes nothing. You know, one very light coat, that's it. I picked the single most humid day to do this dumb shit. Please don't hit me. Nah, yeah, I'm gonna try not to. <laughs> oh, oh, holy shit. Holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> that could be fucking worse. That's the finished product. It's all painted. It's not gonna rust, which is the main thing I care about. And final assembly could start now. I could start putting all the plastic on. Because I cut that huge lump off right there, it had a bolt hole going through it, and that bolt hole connected to this. So now that frame is touching with this, so I'm gonna have to just cut it right there and right there and just lop this whole piece off. I had to cut a little bit of this because the seat bracket was getting in the way. There's a small tab on this side that had to go in first on top, and I think it'll be able to sit in there. There it is, it's on. Oh, that looks so cool. <laughs> From back here, that's what it looks like. Damn. This is the last bolt right here to hold this back piece trim. There we go. So there, it's solid. That is... Obviously, this isn't in use anymore, but it's just up, down, front, back. Damn. Here's a final look at everything. The trim is all on. Everything is solid there. And this Prisma is just peeking in through up there. So you can kind of see it. You can't see any of the welds in there. And this is where the seatbelt bolts up to. So the seatbelt will go through there and through there. And on the other side, it's just like this because this is where the center console is anyways. So... Everything is good there. I can just connect this. It's on the bolt holes. Turn the key on. Hey! Seat works! Yup, up. And down. <laughs> There's a look at that. Damn, that looks so good. With the little prisma peeking in through right there. <laughs> and from the back seat too, I can actually rip this off now that it's in. Wow, this is so... I thought it was going to be one clean rip. Yo, this got me fucked up. I was sitting here like, damn, how did I mess this up so badly that I can't get the bolt in for the seatbelt buckle? But... I just need to lift the whole seat up. It goes up. <laughs> and now I have more than enough room to get that in there. So here I am, fully bolted in. This thing is, it feels so much better than the bucket seat I have in the E30 because this one is my actual size. This is a medium seat. That seat is a large seat, but I got it from my cousin for free. So it made no sense to buy another seat if I had that one for free. So the reason why I welded the brackets with the seat on it is because like right here where it's pinching onto like something like this, I was scared that if I took the seat out, I wouldn't be able to slide the seat back in without completely destroying the fiberglass because I don't, I wasn't trying to scratch it or anything and like destroy it trying to put it in. Everything I did on this seat is exactly what Jimmy Oaks did. So if you haven't watched his video, go to the link in the description and watch that video because this is exactly what he did a few years back. So. I appreciate that video a lot because it made it a lot easier for me to do this. Now I kind of want to go drive it, see what it feels like. I just drove the car around with the bucket seat in it and it's actually crazy how well it holds me in. I didn't put it on my head because 
I literally wasn't doing anything. I was, I was going like 20, just taking a turn like this. <laughs> so I just didn't record it, but I did realize one thing. My foot is here on the pedal. I like to put my heel down into the actual pit right there so that I can have stability and I can give it throttle, like I can control the throttle a lot easier. If I'm doing it from up here, I have no stability. The only way that I can reach is if it's like pretty close to the dash, my knee. And this just doesn't look safe. <laughs> I have my knee that close to the dash. So like that's the only thing. And I feel like if I was an inch lower, that wouldn't be an issue. So I don't know if this is gonna be a long-term solution. I might grind the welds off and just get another seat rail. Who knows? But as of now, I'm gonna leave it like that. I'm really happy with how the seat feels. It feels really good. I thought it was kind of, it looked kind of cheap on the outside when it was uninstalled, but installed, I don't see any issues with it. It doesn't feel like weak or anything, but I'm also not very heavy. So <laughs> I'm not putting this thing under a lot of stress. So yeah, I think that's a good place to end this video because I really want to just tomorrow start working on this. The full five speed swap for the E46. I got it all right here. The drive shaft back over there. This should be everything to get this show on the road. And that's what I want to do. That's been what I've wanted for over a month and a half now. I can actually start and I can start drifting once it's manual because I'll feel a lot more comfortable sliding when I can actually clutch in and clutch kick. You have to absolutely send an automatic car and I don't have that in me right now. So <laughs> I need to learn with a manual car, but that should be fun. Stay tuned for the coming videos when I'll get into that. And yeah, subscribe, leave this video a like, follow me on Instagram right here at E30Joel if you wanna stay up to date with everything I'm doing. Like I previewed the seat yesterday and I showed this five speed swap a little bit ago. So make sure to follow me. And yeah, thank you so much for watching.